Hello everyone, this is another tokenomics walkthrough. This time I'll talk about KlimaDAO. I've written this piece a while ago, I think in November. And uh, yeah, now I'm doing these walkthroughs. I thought it'd be a good chance to talk about this because um, yeah, there's been some uh, interesting things happening to the KlimaDAO protocol. Anyway, so the, the goal of KlimaDAO, and it's really a copy of Olympus DAO, so if you're familiar with that, uh, this will be easier to understand. Is is this so? The concept is this whole protocol owned liquidity. So, KlimaDAO as a DAO tries to own its own liquidity, and this comes from DeFi summer where people would yield farm protocols, and as long as these protocols could offer liquidity. Uh, look, sorry, could offer rewards for the liquidity provided by the users, they would stay and provide liquidity. But when the funds of these projects would dry up, they would leave and go somewhere else and leaving that these projects without liquidity. So Olympus DAO came up with this, with this great idea of why don't the DAO treasury hold its own liquidity and therefore kind of get around this, this issue and always have their own liquidity. And with that, it enables this... Uh, this thing that basically Klima now can collect certain assets by issuing tokens and uh, an interesting asset to collect and that's why it's called Klima now is are these BCT tokens the base carbon ton is what they're called and these are ba basically uh, carbon offsets out of the voluntary carbon markets so it's really not the mandatory markets or these uh, the things that we see in Europe this is a voluntary market, but a lot of companies use them to yeah, signal that they're green and eco-friendly and all that kind of stuff. So they will buy these tokens or they will buy these offsets in the real world and um, with that kind of try to offset their carbon emissions, right? So these offsets come from planting trees or doing something like that and they're accredited by some system. And what Klimadao when they a lot of these are like olympus dao folks and when they um participate in this olympus dao they thought like hey we could do something like this and utilize the ability of buying up assets by issuing tokens to buy carbon offsets and with that create a huge demand for these offsets and the idea of creating a huge demand is of course to increase the price of these offsets so that companies will have to pay more for them so much so that at some point they might rethink their policy and instead of just buying offsets, they might actually reduce their carbon emissions. Who knows? So that's kind of the goal is to amass as many of these carbon emission offsets as they can. So we've got the treasury here with the base carbon tons and then they've got an interesting mechanism to receive base carbon tons into their treasury. So they, what they do, there's this bonding mechanism where... Uh, bonders or users they can interact with klima dao directly they would receive discounted klima so a bit cheaper over a certain period of time if they deposit uh, base carbon tons into the treasury so it's this yeah really basic mechanism but they're saying like hey you can get klima cheaper than on the market if you um, over a certain period of time give us these uh, ba base carbon tons right and that ideally creates demand for these base carbon tons now we'll find out where these come from and uh really well yeah they, they would obviously purchase them on on sushi swap that that's where they are available so they can do like a a bct for usdc swap there's a pool for that where they can get these tokens from and they actually come into uniswap uh, into sushi swap by something called the token bridge so you can look that up it's a really interesting project they actually take these real world carbon offsets and turn them into nfts and these nfts are then fractionalized um, based on tons right so one of these bcts as the name suggests is one ton of carbon removed from the atmosphere and the bct is just a specific classification of these so we get all these bct tokens and they're available on SushiSwap and can be purchased and this, this flow into the KlimaDAO treasury. So the idea is with this bonding mechanism, they create demand for all this to happen um, downstream. 
And this is now really where Vera, where we get into the into the real world. So this is a system that exists for a while. It's a um, yeah a, a offset record keeping solution um, that has been used. There's multiple of these, and they essentially have a mechanism to retire records like these offsets. So retiring retiring means they're actually not offset against carbon emissions, but they are uh, retired in this solution so that they can be transferred to a different solution. That's the whole, that's what this whole mechanism does, right? So uh, a user can then purchase these verified carbon units on the market, retire them in Vera, and then what happens, this retirement ID out of Vera, because if they're retired, they can't be moved out of, out of Vera. I think that's how the mechanism goes. Um, and then this retirement ID is then transmitted into this token bridge where an NFT is minted. So let's say somebody buys this verified carbon unit, which says there has been an acre of palm trees planted somewhere, um, which have a carbon offset of, um, yeah, who knows, 200 tons. And then this is retired into this Vera system. And then this is transmitted into the Toucan Bridge. The Toucan Bridge mints an NFT and says, okay, this is for the 100 or 200 tons. And then these are then fractionalized into these tokens. And if these tokens have a certain standard so they're not uh, older than 2008 then they get they get grouped into this bct and clima dao is currently they're working on other tokens i think they've introduced one recently but the main one that they have and that they interact with is this base carbon ton so there are certain criteria which they can be pooled in so if it's if it i don't know if it might be like pine trees they might have a different classification or if it's from solar panels or a different year or whatnot they might have a different classification right but so they try to group these into these tools so now we would have 200 as we do one per ton 200 of these tokens get on the market and um they can be brought into the treasury so that's kind of how the mechanism works right we issue these klima tokens to the bonders the bonders then have them and uh yeah they they drive this demand in the real world for these for these offsets. So really interesting here that they interact with the with the real world actually this DeFi protocol. So now another interesting thing like if you've you know if you've kind of paid attention to this now you would think so what do the bonders actually do with their klima? Wouldn't they just dump that on the market and they would dump the price and kind of you know defeat the whole purpose of this thing? Well yes and that's why they have. Um, come up with this with this mechanism that they uh, essentially reward holding and staking of the Klima tokens with a very high APY. That means they'll have to mint more and more tokens via a kind of a rebase mechanism. So if you stake your Klima, you get this S Klima token, and then you're, um, I think every eight hours, you get more Klima into your token. So they have a very high inflation that they run with to reward holding of these tokens and the idea is that that essentially would not erode the price too much but at some point would find a stable level and that's kind of how i can explain if you've been following the price action of klima of the klima dao token you may think like this is a complete failure i'm not sure if it's a complete failure it it might just be that we've been going through this price finding mechanism i know the token has been at like two thousand dollars traded at that at some point during like the, the first initial hype phase and now we're at 20 25 dollars or something like that but i think this whole mechanism is kind of a, a price finding for what is a fair price for this klima token um given that it, it has a treasury full of these bct tokens right so currently i think they have 15 million tons of offsets and that's like more than some of the smaller countries in the world emit in in tokens annually right so the mechanism here is really that these the stakers i mean they can buy their tokens on sushi swap as well and that these that 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 there's an, a high incentive via a very high apy at some point it was thirty thousand. maybe now it's like more around twenty thousand. olympus dow has dropped down to seven thousand, which is still a pretty good apy um if you hold these tokens and if they don't erode in price too much right and yeah so that's kind of the incentive to hold these uh these tokens and the other thing and that's where this protocol owned liquidity which i said in the beginning comes into play is that um klima dao also offers bonding for 
LP tokens, so liquidity provider tokens. So somebody might provide liquidity for uh, the Klima BCT pair or the BCT USDC pair, and Klima would also issue discounted Klima for providing of these LP fee tokens, so that they can then store these liquidity provider tokens in their own treasury. Um, and essentially, since they hold most of the BCT and also Klima through the staking mechanism, they can provide all of this liquidity to the market. So for people buying this stuff on SushiSwap, they will pay a fee for that, and Klima would get a part of that fee into their treasury. So that's, I guess, like one of the revenue streams that, that Klima has. The other, obviously, is seniori seniority, right? So they, they mint these tokens, these Klima tokens, at no cost, and they get BCT in return. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how this this mechanism works, and um, well, yeah, maybe just a, w a word on the reward mechanism, like this APY that the users get. I think it's like um, currently twenty thousand or something. So they, of course, they have this. Um, they, what they want is that the a percentage of Klima staked is is very very high, because that uh, creates this belief in the system. They have the Klima. Uh, that they that they hold in their own treasury, they can provide liquidity, get fees that they that they earn um, an income stream from that, and that insur also also ensures that Klima isn't t t just dumped on the market and, and sold off. Um, so the reward mechanism, there are some other influencing factors, but the main thing that goes into it is um, if the percentage of Klima that is staked goes down, the APY goes up, so to incentivize more people to, to stake, and if the um, if the percentage of Klima stake goes up, then the APY goes down to a normalized level um, to kind of yeah reach reach a good equilibrium, I guess. So yeah, super interesting uh, tokenomics in my opinion of what they've what the guys have designed here with this protocol owned liquidity. Um, and also the, I guess the other interesting or really interesting thing here is that they actually interact with the real world and drive demand, even though it's only the voluntary markets but they drive demand in these voluntary markets and with that yeah kind of impacting the real world anyway i hope this was helpful thanks for watching